should Buddhists celebrate Vesak Day? Uh -huh. How should Buddhists celebrate Vesak celebrate Vesak Day? Do you know why it's Vesak Day? Do you know why it's Vesak Day? Huh? Uh, do you know how Buddhists in Buddha's time celebrate Vesak Day? Do you know? Huh? Yeah. In the Buddha's time, nobody celebrate Vesak Day. <laughs> because Vesak Day didn't exist until 19, 19 don't know, 60 something, 50 something. It was passed in UN. It was raised by the Sri Lanka uh, Commission uh, to UN. And then it was passed as a, as a referendum. Yeah, and then recognized as a, as a public holiday, as a celebration for Buddhists worldwide. Yeah, so in the Buddha's time, there's no such a celebration. But given that it's on the 15th, yeah, uh, the monks would be observing Uposatha. Yeah, so on Uposatha day, uh, on the new moon and the full moon day, in the Buddha's time, they don't celebrate 1st and 15th. Eh? <laughs> yeah, Chu Yi Su is a Chinese thing. But it coincides with the, with the moon. In the Buddha's time, they, they celebrate Upo, Uposatha, or rather, they observe Uposatha. Uh, Chinese, we translate as Pusa. Okay, so it's a day. Buddha's time, they actually celebrate on the new moon and the full moon. Yeah, new moon means the moon is new. <laughs> so the moon, actually the moon is rotating around the earth, right? So at some point, totally covered by the shadow. So we cannot see the moon. The moon itself doesn't shine. The moon itself reflects the light from the sun, as we know from physics. Huh? So when it's totally covered, then it's uh, occluded. So you cannot see the moon. And when you cannot see the moon, it's considered new moon in uh, the Buddha's, uh, in the uh, Buddhist tradition or in the Indian culture is considered the new moon. Yeah. Then it, after that, it rotate, rotate, rotate. And then you start to see a bit of it, a bit of it. Uh, at first cannot see, then you see a bit, a bit, a bit, a bit, a bit uh, then crescent moon, then a bit, a bit, a bit, 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 yeah, so it's usually 14 days apart. Yeah, then sometimes 15 days. So when we recite uh, the, the Vinaya, we will recite Vinaya on these two days. Yeah, so on these two days, we will recite. And what we will say is, uh, we will say like, uh, like, Hei Yue or Bai Yue. Yeah. Yeah, so sometimes you'll be separated by 14 days, sometimes separated by 15 days. Mm. Yeah. So it's very interesting because uh, in the Vinaya, we actually don't say Chu Yi Su. We say Tei Yue, Bai Yue, meaning the black moon and the white moon, referring to the new moon and the full moon. Yeah. So on these two dates, we will recite the Vinaya. Uh, and usually before that, we will do uh, a general uh, repentance no? uh, and then of course usually um, what, what would be done is uh, way before that uh, as close as possible to the inf infraction we would have done the repentance ready but then the, on these two dates we will do a general one and then after that we recite the, the Vinaya no? so after that then um, it is the, it is then considered okay. At this point, the whole community is super pure. <laughs> yeah. Then after that, we will usually the uh, the lay people will also come to uh, to recite the vinaya also. That means the precepts. No? But when we are reciting vinaya, you all will not be around. Yeah. Uh, before that, we will do a uh, what do you call song uh, jie Mm, we will uh, call to order 
and then we will ask all those who have not received a higher ordination to leave. That means even novices will be asked to vacate the Sima Hall, yeah, the precept hall. Uh, the hall that or whichever hall we are using to do the recitation. Of course, in the earlier part, before halls were conduct were constructed, then it's basically in the forest. Uh. Mm. Yeah. So in the Buddha's time, there's no like like now well, major celebration. Uh, when I came back from US, uh, it, it took a bit uh, a while to get used to also because in US we don't really celebrate Vesakdi also. <laughs> yeah. In the US, we don't really celebrate anything <laughs> in our monastery. Uh, year in, year out is basically the same thing. Yeah, it's basically the same thing. Morning, sit, then after that, have uh, read Diamond Sutra, then have breakfast. After breakfast, self-study, then around 10 o'clock, uh, around 10 o'clock, sometimes 9 plus, those who are kitchen duty will go to kitchen and then prepare for uh, lunch. Of course, earlier on, uh, when we do our sitting, <clears throat> uh, those who are on kitchen duty would, uh, would come out at about 5.30. Yeah, then we'll go and prepare for breakfast. So after, after preparation, lunch at 11, then later we shifted it to 11.30. Yeah. Then after lunch, rest, and 2 o'clock, we start our afternoon class. Yeah. So the, then in the evening, uh, in the evening, we have our, our evening puja at uh, 6, then followed by our sitting again. Yeah. Then by the time we finish, it's about, uh, let me see, it's about 8.30. Yeah. Then uh, after 8.30, some of us would do one, do extended sitting. Some of us would then retire, do our own reading or something. And nine plus, we all end the day. Yeah, that is one whole day cycle. Then on uh, Thursday, we don't have class. Otherwise, everything else is the same. Monday, we have Vinaya class. Tuesday, Wednesday, we have uh, Dharma class, which is on the commentaries or the sutras. Thursday break. Friday, Saturday, we have Dharma class again. Then uh, Sunday, we have one day sitting. Yeah. And in the evening, we'll have Tabe Chan. Yeah, we have Tabe Chan. Bye, Sean. Where's Sean? Sean, 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 don't have picture already. Bye-bye. Yo, you're in the train already, huh? Is that a train? Oh, oh, oh hello, Valerie. <laughs> uh. Uh, so then we'll have the Tape Chan. And then by the time we finish Tape Chan, it's the same about uh, close to eight, uh, no, seven plus. Then some people will do another sitting. Some of us will rest. Um, then we'll end the, end the week. Then Monday we rinse and repeat. Yeah. So throughout the whole year, it's like that. Uh, so Chinese New Year, also more or less the same. <laughs> if I don't recall wrongly, Chinese New Year, we still have class. Oh no, maybe maybe just for that. Chinese New Year, we have a special, no. We may have a, a short pu cha. Yeah, and that's it. <laughs> yeah. The only thing special in the whole year is when we have the anji. So we have a... a, 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 a we would have a special meeting to to so chou, that means to to fall in. <laughs> well, we were always assembling, uh, and then we will count how many people is present for the retreat, and then we will uh, go through the ceremony to say we officially uh, start the retreat. And before that, we will we will jie jie, you know, we will demarcate the boundaries of the of the place to say, okay, this is the boundaries in which we will have our retreat. Yeah. Um, like sometimes, like when we went for the retreat in, uh, what is that? The St. John's Islands. Yeah. Uh, I brought them to do the tapis. So around 
in a way is to demarcate the boundaries also. Yeah. So um, the, 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 there's this, this, there's a teaching or belief that, so when we do the demarcation, then the hufa would, would guard the boundaries. Yeah, not the human hufa. <laughs> So I told them, and now you you please don't walk out of the demarcation. <laughs> you walk out, not problem. <laughs> yeah, uh, but more importantly, the demarcation is for us. More importantly, it's for us. It's to remind us that, that uh, we are doing our practice within these boundaries. Yeah. So other than that, yeah, there's really no uh, particular celebration. So then, how should Buddhists celebrate? Buddhists should celebrate it um, remembering that there was a person just like us, unenlightened. Uh, this person, just like us, had worries, had um, troubles, had difficulties, had flaws, just like us. This person um, had jealousy, had greed, hatred, and delusion. Uh, this person at one point in time was lazy like us. Uh, this person like us was petty like us, impatient like us. This person at some point in time uh, was just like us with all the humanly flaws. Uh, except that this person at one point decided enough. This person decided he want to do something else. He want to do something to change. He wanted to change himself. And he made this very strong conviction that till he attained enlightenment, he shall not give up. And then he slowly changed. And he changed by practicing the perfections, the parami. Yeah. He started to cultivate the threefold practices. Sila, Samadhi, Tanya, Jie Ting Hui, yeah. precepts, concentration, and uh, wisdom. He started practicing the six paramita, the ten paramitas. He started to uh, work on himself. Uh, he, he started to do that. And after a, a long, long time of, of giving, of restraining himself with the precepts, of uh, practicing uh, uh, forbearance, yeah, patience and endurance, and for a long time of practicing diligence, effort in all the practices, he developed concentration and he attained to wisdom. And then in due time, when the conditions was right, he uh, descended to uh, uh, he, he ascended to the Tushita heaven and then awaited the conditions. Uh, he continued to practice until such point in time when the conditions are right. What conditions? Sentient beings are ready. And then when sentient beings are ready, he descended into the uh, his uh, to be mother's womb, yeah, Queen Maya. And then in due time, was born. Uh, and then from there on, he demonstrated uh, the, the way that the Buddha would go through yeah? um, and then be self-awakened, yeah? be self-awakened. And from there, he uh, uh, established the Dhamma and then in due time established the Vinaya setting up the Sangha and gave teachings for 45 years. He became known as the Buddha in our time. He was known as many names such as Gotama ascetic. When he was young, he was known as Prince Siddhartha, but he was also known by many names. Rulai, Ying Kong, Zhen Bian Zi, Ming Xing Zhu, San Zi Si Jian Jie, and so on. Uh, some people uh, was able to listen to his teaching 
and then practice and attain enlightenment, others are not able to. But he showed all human beings that it is humanly possible to attain enlightenment. He showed us that the way that is possible. Yeah. It is like those scientists who discovered uh, uh, the natural law or, or, or the discovery of penicillin. Yeah. When they discover penicillin, uh, it applied to all human beings, not just to a particular group, not just to scientists, not just to chemists, not just to biologists, but to all human beings. So the celebration of Vesak, rightly speaking, is it's not simply just a celebration by Buddhists, huh? yeah, but it's a celebration by all sentient beings um, of the conquering of human suffering, conquering of our human limitation, conquering of defilements uh, and attaining of true happiness. Yeah, we should reflect on this every day, but human beings are very strange. If we do it every day, it becomes mechanical and then we have no more feeling. <laughs> so we do it once a year. Yeah, we should reflect reflect in this way and especially so we should reflect that although we may sometimes feel like we are we are really unworthy yeah, yeah we may feel like we don't have confidence yeah that the more we learn dharma the more we find that oh, yeah, we are such a horrible person <laughs> or we are so weak or we are so uh, messy our head our mind is so messy you know but as we celebrate Vesak, as we reflect on the Buddha, whether it's on Vesak or not, we should consider, despite all this, the Buddha did it. So can we. So can we. That's the whole purpose of him demonstrating to us the path. He was, trying, he was basically doing that. All the Buddhas are, and Bodhisattvas are basically trying to do us, show us that. Yeah that despite our human um, flaws and weaknesses, yeah, we can do it. Yeah. If only we just stick to doing it. <laughs> yeah. So try. Okay, try. Bye, Venice. Where is Venice? Venice, 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 Venice. Oh, okay, Venice, yes. Bye, Venice. Mm. Uh, and so of course, sometimes when we try, we try very hard. So we may want to meditate at midnight. <laughs> Can we do our meditation at midnight if we can't sleep? Well, there's nothing stopping you from doing that, but you may end up not being able to sleep for the whole night. <laughs> yeah, uh, it can go two ways. Huh? Okay, it can go two ways. Um, some people, when they meditate at night, then um, it's not that they feel drowsy, but they feel relaxed and then they can sleep. Okay? Some people, when they meditate, they feel relaxed and they become alert. <laughs> yeah. And then they, they start to panic. Ah, <laughs> Even worse. Yeah. So if you cannot sleep at night and, if, and you do want to sleep, okay? I don't think I, I can control people whether they want to sleep or not, given that I don't like to sleep. <laughs> so if you want to meditate at night, you should lie down. And then uh, as you lie down, be aware of your contact, the contact, your head with the pillow, the shoulders, the, the back, the elbows with the, with the mattress. Yeah. And then your, your lower back, your butt, your thighs, your calf, your heels, and then back to your hand on your abdomen. And then just have an, a general awareness of your lying down posture. And as you lie there, um, you observe your breathing. Yeah. And as you breathe, when you're lying down, your hands are on your and your hands are on your 
belly area, your breathing can become quite uh, prominent. Yeah, just let it breathe as it goes. Uh, don't have to control it. Uh, but if somehow you are excited, you can regulate it a bit. Yeah, for a start, and then let it just follow its own sequence. If at some point you have thoughts, then remind yourself this is rest time. That acknowledge that this is something important. Just go and pay a bit of attention to it to say, okay, what is this? Okay, this is maybe about work. Maybe this is about family. This is about my children's study. Okay, just acknowledge. Okay, take note of it. I will remember it tomorrow. I'll take care of it. Then after that, focus on the breathing sensation. Oh, uh, yeah, try this. Then over time, you will find that you can go to sleep. Another method you can do is after doing the scanning, then after that, you recite Buddha's name. Buddha's name is better than counting sheep. Sheep cannot help us. Buddha, uh, when you count, <laughs> when you recite Buddha's name, there's merits better than counting sheep. Sheep has no merit. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, okay. So, <clears throat> can I? Put our thumbs together. Yuan Xiao San Zhang Zhu Fan Nao. Yuan Xiao San Zhang Zhu Fan Nao. Yuan De Zhi Hui Zhen Ming Liao. Yuan De Zhi Hui Zhen Ming Liao. Fu Yuan Zui Zhang Xi Xiao Chu. Fu Yuan Zui Zhang Xi Xiao Chu. Shi Shi Tang Xing Fu Sa Dao. Shi Shi Tang Xing Fu Sa Dao. Amitabha. Amitabha.